Today I'm in my living room and I'm standing at it with the entrance to the kitchen. We've got this wide open floor plan and you can hear it's kind of echoey in here. We're not big fans of carpets, so we don't have one down here in the living room. And there's just lots of hard surfaces like there, the ceiling's flat, doesn't have any texture. So I'm gonna create some acoustic panels to go on some of these walls, but uh, I'm gonna use it as functional art to uh, introduce a little bit of color here and there, and maybe we can uh, get some design elements as well as function. Let's do it. I'm trying to make this project really approachable with materials that pretty much anybody has access to. So I picked up a canvas drop cloth instead of more expensive material. This is just kind of a natural color and it's an eight ounce. So I also picked up some cheap craft paints. Uh, for the back of the pieces, I've got some just plastic. This is three mil plastic. I'm gonna attach that with a nail, uh, with a staple gun. To get started on these, I'm just breaking down some plywood scraps that I had. I'm cutting them all to about three inches, which will fully cover the mineral wool. And I'm just making a bunch of strips here so that I can make some basic frames. Then I cut all of my strips to final length at the miter saw and I had a pile ready for assembly. For assembly, I'm just going with glue and brad nails and just making butt joints. These will not be seen. They are just a basic frame that's gonna hold everything together. I'm using mineral wool insulation as the sound dampening agent here, and that stuff is not great to breathe in. So to keep the fibers from floating around the room, I'm actually going to enclose each of these with some plastic on the backside. So I started by getting my roll of plastic, measuring each one and just stapling it down and then cutting off the excess. At this point, I've got all of the frames made that are going to hold the insulation, and I have put the plastic backer on them, so it's gonna keep that insulation in there. Now I'm going to work on the fronts, and what I'm using for a budget solution is some of this canvas drop cloth. So I'm gonna get going, spreading some of this out, figuring out what designs and what paint I want to use, um, and let's see what we can come up with. I took the drop cloth to the floor so that I could cut everything out and just measured and cut strips so that they would fit each of my parts. The canvas was really wrinkly from being packed in that bag so tightly. So we grabbed a lint roller and my wife helped me by removing some of the excess fibers. Then she ironed the panels to get all the wrinkles out so that I could start painting on a nice flat surface. Yes, I know how to iron, but she volunteered to do this and I definitely took her up on the offer. Now it's time to paint. I started off by taping down one of the canvas panels to my outfeed table. I thought this would help it just lay flatter so that I could paint on it more easily, but it ended up being more trouble than it was worth. So going forward, I did not tape them completely down. As I mentioned before, for paint, I'm using some of these craft acrylic paints. I'm watering them down so that I can make them stretch farther and not have much material that I have to use. Even with me being very careful to not push the paint underneath the tape, I ran into issues with the paint being watered down and it wanting to leak underneath my tape. I was not happy with the lines and I ended up switching to using full strength paint and having to pick up some more paint. Most of the big home improvement stores can get you a sample size that's a few ounces that's like three or four dollars and it works really well for small projects like this. It was a little bit disappointing to me to have to go and spend a little bit more on paint. I was really hoping that this really simple craft paint would stretch farther by watering it down, but using that blue that you just saw me apply is what really made me realize right here that the lines were just not good enough. I continued to work my way through the different panels and using some tape here and there to just create these geometric shapes and lines. 
I was kind of just making it up as I went. So if you do this, have some fun, you know, just explore, uh, tape something off and paint and then throw another piece of tape down and put a different color beside it until you have something that you like. And here's a little montage of me painting the rest of these panels. Then we can get on to the rest of the project. I ripped down a few more strips and then cut them at 45 degrees. These are gonna be used as the cleats to hang these panels on the wall. To attach the cleats to the boxes, I'm using a little bit of glue and then securing them with screws from the top. I had already put the plastic on these, but it was fine because they were still open from the other side. Just be sure to orient them the right way so that when you go to put them on the wall, they will connect properly. As I mentioned a little earlier, I'm using mineral wool insulation as the sound dampening agent for this. It's commonly used for sound dampening in walls and I wanted to use it because it's pretty approachable. I got this entire giant thing for a little over $20. Just like when you're dealing with any insulation, wear some gloves and a respirator. You don't want these fibers getting all over your skin and you definitely don't want to breathe it in. I just remembered I had a couple of these acoustic panels left over from a build I did a few years ago. I'll link to it on the screen in the cards now. I'll link below to some of these different acoustic panels that might work pretty well for you if you don't want to use the insulation. I didn't quite have enough of the insulation to fill up all of the panels that I was doing. so. I actually had some leftover shipping foam from some different things that I had ordered and I've just kept it for such an occasion. I cut up different pieces of it with a knife and a saw and just put it in some of the empty spots. I guess it does pay to be a hoarder. Who knew? I ended up using some spray adhesive to just kind of settle those fibers on the insulation. That way they wouldn't be floating around. It just kind of made them sticky and stay in there. Uh, you could probably use some hairspray also, but I thought this was just a good extra precaution to kind of keep them from going everywhere. If you've ever done any upholstery work, this is the same concept. And if you haven't, I'm gonna show you how. You basically secure one side of your upholstery very well. I'm just using staples here. And opposite of that, you pull it really tight and secure it in a couple of places. Then you move to the two opposite sides. Start again by kind of pulling and securing, then going opposite of that and securing it again. You kind of work your way around securing and pulling tight as you go. And eventually you end up with no wrinkles. Then I just trimmed off the excess with some scissors. The next part of this project is milling up some walnut so that I can wrap these panels in walnut and make them look beautiful in my home. If you don't want to use walnut or you don't have it available, find a different way to make these look nice that you like. You could use a more inexpensive wood and stain it. You could use some paint to kind of dress it up or continue the geometric lines that you had on the panels. Just get creative with it. For milling this walnut, I started out breaking them down to rough length. Then I took them to the joiner to establish some flat faces and edges. I've ripped the strips on the table saw just slightly wider than my actual frames so that I would make sure to cover the plywood frames I made. Then I'm splitting them in half by resawing them on the bandsaw before getting everything to a consistent thickness at my planer and at the drum sander. Time has come to put the walnut frame on these pieces and I'm just going to reference the actual size of the pieces and then cut them to length. It's a, a very accurate way when you have multiple different sizes rather than trying to nail all of your measurements from a tape measure, you can use the actual piece. So briefly, here's how you do that. I've got my piece I want for the side and I want my long side pieces to hang over the edge pieces. So. To figure out how long I need this, I need to add two of my end pieces to the end. So one will really be here on the end, 
one will be on the other end. But I've stacked them both here to simulate what it will be like. I'm gonna line this up on the very edge and strike a line. To secure the walnut frame to the panels, I'm just using some glue and brad nails. I'm not too worried about these brad nails showing because from the sides, they're not very visible. So that's why I just went with this method. It's simple and I didn't want to deal with miters. I did mess up on one of the sides. I forgot to cut it to length. It's nothing a flush trim saw couldn't solve. I have a bunch of strips that are left over, just cut offs from other projects and stuff that I've been collecting in the corner. So I'm gonna go and chop up some of these to get the face frames out of them. They're pretty much, I mean, they were gonna be thrown away anyway, so I'm glad to be able to use some of these, but I'm gonna lay them all out on each of the pieces so that I make sure I have enough and then uh, cut them all to size. I ended up needing a few more walnut strips, so I used a featherboard on my table saw to cut strips to the right thickness. And then each time I would just bump the fence a little bit over until I touched the featherboard again and rip another strip. Because of how full I stuffed these with insulation, there was a slight pillowing effect. Because of that, I did not want to go with miters on this finish frame with these strips because I was afraid that they would not meet up perfectly. And if you don't get a perfect miter on the corners, it really shows. So again, I'm going with butt joints here and I'll show you later that it was definitely the right choice because they look fantastic. I'm using a 23 gauge pin nailer to attach them so that you won't see the tiny, tiny holes very much. I put down a bead of wood glue so that the walnut would actually attach to the outer walnut frame. And then kind of on the inside where the canvas is, I just laid a quick bead of CA glue so that it would attach while the other glue was drying. A little bit of sanding later, including some hand sanding, and these were ready for finish. For finish, I'm just using some satin spray lacquer. I put two coats on and I used some plastic to guard the canvas against overspray. I went with lacquer for a few reasons. It looks great on walnut. It does not require sanding in between coats and these will not get a lot of handling. Once they go up on the wall, they're pretty much just going to stay there. People aren't gonna be touching them. I'm not going to focus real heavily on the installation of these. They're pretty basic. Uh, if you know the concept of using a French cleat, it consists of two different pieces that are cut at 45 degree angles that nest together. So you saw earlier in the video where I attached one side of the cleat to my actual panels. I'm installing the other cleat into the wall here using a level to make sure that everything is nice and straight. Then I just cut a slit in the plastic and kind of tuck it into the insulation so that I can grab the panel and hang it up on the wall. All right, enough of that. Let's see the finished shots.
Well, that's it for this one. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate you checking it out. You may not be able to tell on camera with the mic. I feel like there is less echo in here after I got these panels up. If these don't eliminate all of the echo, that's okay. I feel like they're already helping and they look good. So we've got some cool functional art on the walls. Only time will tell if it will really help cut down on some of the echo and noise that just goes throughout our house. If I had to do it over again, I would probably attach the canvas over the sides and then uh, just make a more simple frame. I think I ended up making a few more steps than I needed to, but they turned out really nice in the end, so I am happy with that. Thanks so much for checking this one out, and I'll see you on the next video. This thing is not